but the only way he can get you is to have a crack in the wall and to have the crack in the wall it means that he has to keep on hammering the same place smashing the same place attacking the same place until it creates a crack that is why the bible says that the serpent cannot bite you until the edge is broken and the way satan breaks the edge is the continuous hammering the continuous hammering so that it can penetrate and so don't be surprised when you prevail in one battle another battle shows up voice of triumph a round of applause and i want you to turn your bibles to first samuel chapter 17 the verse number nine first samuel 17 the verse number nine first samuel 17 the verse number nine samuel is in the bible first samuel 17 the verse number nine If he be able to fight with me, this is Goliath speaking. If he be able to fight with me, in fact, let me let me let me make you understand this scripture. Go to verse eight for me. Go to verse eight. Let's start from verse eight. And he stood, Goliath, and he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel. And said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in Ari? I'm not, I'm not I a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul. Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. Next verse. If he be able to fight with me, I want you to take note of the verse 9. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then, then, the emphasis, then will we be your servant. We will be your servant. In other words, if you select somebody and the person fights with me and the person wins the battle, then myself and the Philistines, we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. So, what he's saying in a nutshell is this. If I lose, I am your servant with the Philistines. But if you lose, you become my servants. Do you understand that? I want you to look at somebody and tell the person dealing with the enemy. You may be seated in the heavenly places. Dealing with the enemy. Like I said last week, I will be teaching this series for the next six weeks. The broader uh, uh, topic or the broader title of this series is dealing with the enemy. Last week, um, I taught on the subtitle, uh, Know the Enemy. Know the Enemy. Uh, tonight, I want to teach on how the enemy operates. How the enemy operates. How the enemy operates. After knowing the enemy, you must also know how the enemy uh, operates. I want you to understand that this battle that we are engaged in, and this battle that we are involved in is real. 
Spiritual warfare is real. Spiritual battles are real. It is no fantasy. <laughs> it's not a movie. It's not Hollywood. It's real. Spiritual battles. Spiritual warfare is real. And the devil is real as you are real. As a matter of fact, he is more real than you. And so, this battle, it is not something that somebody concocted. It is not an illusion of somebody. It is not something that somebody just imagined or just visualized. It is real. The battle is real. The warfare is real. The kingdom of darkness is real. Satan is real. The devil is real. His demons are real. All these forces of darkness, they are real. They are real. You see, if you don't know that they are real, you cannot win this battle. If you don't know that they are real, you cannot prevail against the enemy. If you don't know that you are real, then you don't, in the first place, know the battle that you are involved in. And this battle, you didn't choose it. You didn't choose it. As long as you are a believer, as long as you have received Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, as long as you have made a decision to serve God, the first day that you made that decision, from that very day, you are involved in a battle. You are engaged in spiritual warfare. And listen to me, Satan will not leave you alone. I have had so many people ask me this question several times and numerous of times. What is the question? When I was in the world, whatever I wanted, I got it without a fight, without a struggle. When I was in the world, I wasn't struggling. Any job I want, I got it. If I want a breakthrough, it comes like that. Doors open for me like that. I wasn't struggling like the way I'm struggling now. I want to give you an answer because some of you may have that kind of question in your mind. The reason why when you were in the world, everything was cool and rosy and you weren't struggling and everything comes to you on the silver platter was because there was no resistance from the kingdom of darkness because you were already in the kingdom. The reason why there was no opposition, there was no struggle, there was no battles, and everything was coming to you on the silver platter was because Satan knew that he already got you. And Jesus said, a kingdom that is divided against itself will not stand. And I want you to understand that Satan's kingdom is not divided against itself. He doesn't fight his own. That is why everything you desire, everything you wanted, you received it without contention, without fighting for it, without any opposition or resistance, without any battle. There was no spiritual warfare. Why? Because you were not engaged in one. You were already in his kingdom. And the reason why everything was coming to you without a battle and without a struggle was because if Satan knows that receiving everything will keep you in his kingdom, he will make you receive everything as long as you are still in his kingdom and you are under his control and you are in his domain and he has, he has power over your life and your destiny. Listen to me. He will not resist you. That is why when you were in the world, everything was just coming to you. But the day you decided to give your life to Jesus and to follow Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, right there, you become an act 
enemy to the devil and the devil also become your act enemy. Right then and then, Satan has declared war, not only over your life, but over your destiny and everything that concerns you, which means that for anything to come to you is going to be a battle. For anything to come into your hands, you must fight for it. You must contend for it. You must engage the enemy in a warfare and prevail against him and overcome him, overpower him, outsmart him, outwit him for you to be able to get what you desire and what you wanted. So this battle is real. This battle, it is not a fiction. <laughs> it's real. It's real. There is something that we read in the verse 9 that you didn't take note of. And I want you to project it again for me. I want you to watch something. The devil eh, is not stupid as you think. Last week, I thought about that. You see, they have made us believe that the devil is some kind of stupid guy, foolish guy, who doesn't know what he is doing. And I want to repeat what I said last week. As smart, as intelligent as you are, with all your degrees and credentials, look at the dumb things that the devil makes you do. As smart, as brilliant, clever as you are, look at the things the devil makes you do. Unthinkable things. Unimaginable things. Things that when you are in your right sense, you will not do it. Why? Because there is an external force that is manipulating you to make you act out of character. The devil is not stupid. The devil knows how you will react if he screams at you. The devil knows how you will react if he punches you on the chest. He knows what your reaction will be. Why? Because over the years and for centuries, Satan has carefully studied believers and watched human beings carefully. By sending his hordes of demons and agents that have come in covenant with him to carry out his mission and agenda against believers. And he sent spirit. And this spirit that he sent, we call this spirit familiar spirit. Why do we call them familiar spirit? We call them familiar spirit because these are spirits that are familiar to us. They are around us all the time. And what is the purpose of them being around us? Monitoring. To monitor us. There are some of you you, 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 you have seen, whether through prayer or through revelation or through vision or through dream, that somebody is watching you wherever you go. Wherever you are, you can sense that there is somebody that is watching you. There is somebody that is monitoring you. There is somebody that is following you. It is a spirit that has been assigned against you to monitor your movement, to see your routines, to see your schedule, to see how you function. What makes you angry? What makes you overreact? What gets you upset? And they gather all this information and they use it against you. The devil is not as foolish and stupid as you have been taught. The devil is not foolish and stupid as probably you envision him to be. Having said that, I want you to understand that when the devil was dispossessed from heaven, and the Bible says he lost his estate and position as an archangel in heaven. The only thing he lost is his position. The only thing he, he lost is his domain and his seat in heaven. But everything that God created him with, God never took it. 
Because the giftings of God are without repentance. When God gives you something, he will not take it away from you. He is not a man. A man can give you a gift, but he can turn around and say, because you insulted me, because you didn't please me, because you didn't do my biddings, please, what I gave you yesterday, bring it. And you say, it's a gift. Say, so what gift? Bring it. God is not like that. When he gives you something, a gift, and that is what Satan is using to manipulate so many believers and taking them to hell. Why? Because they are still functioning in the gift. They are still operating in the gift, but they are wayward. And because they are functioning in the gift and still operating in the gift, they think that God is with them, but God is not with them because God doesn't condone sin, iniquity. God doesn't condone transgression, wordliness, ungodliness. God doesn't condone unholiness. He said, I am holy and be holy. So, God can depart. His presence can depart from you. The anointing can leave you, but you can still operate in the gift. And oftentimes, the devil will make you believe that because you are operating in the gift, he is still with you, but he has left you long time ago. And a lot of people are headed to hell because they believe that as long as, you know, I could still see, I could still prophesy, I could still heal. Don't forget, he said, on that day, I will tell them, I knew them not. And they will say, in your name, we cast out devil. The reason why they cast out the devil is because, number one, the name of Jesus is powerful. When you mention it, every demon, things in heaven, things on the earth, things beneath the waters of the earth must bow. They are obliged, they are compelled to bow and to submit to the name of Jesus. That is number one. Number two, because of your gifting, you will cast out devils and you will heal the sick. Why? Because the giftings have not been taken away from you. So they will say, in your name, we cast out devils. In your name, we, we heal the sick. And Jesus will say, I knew you not. I knew you not. Hey, be careful how you work with God. Otherwise, on that day, you will be shocked. You will be shocked. <laughs> You will be so amazed. You will be in awe. You will open your mouth like that. You will be shocked. The fact that you are functioning in the gift doesn't mean that God is pleased with you. You have to, you have to re-examine yourself and walk with God in the integrity of his word and live a holy and a righteous life and live according to the word. Anything that contradicts the word, avoid it. Period. There is no shortcut when it comes to holiness, when it comes to righteousness, when it comes to purity. When you have any weakness, spend time in the presence of God and ask God to help you. Ask him to help you. So, a lot of people are headed to hell because they are still operating in the gift. And so, Satan, God never took any of the gift. And Satan was created with precious stones not only precious stones he was also created according to the scriptures with symbols and pipes which means that all these instruments that you see that accompanies our worship and praise is embedded in him God created him with all these instruments. And so when Satan began to lead the orchestra of heaven, he doesn't need all these gadgets and instruments to be played. Because when he sings, all the instruments come out of his voice. So when he was dispossessed and expelled from heaven, he only lost his position. He didn't lose his wisdom. He didn't also lose his beauty, but he lost the glory. It's two different things. So, don't look at him and say he's, he, he's foolish. That is why he had outsmarted us over the years and over the centuries and over the decades. Because we see him as a foolish devil, but he is not. That is why the Bible says we shouldn't be ignorant 
of his devices. The devices also there is synonymous to his, his schemes. We shouldn't be ignorant of his fiery darts, his tricks, his manipulative acts. We shouldn't be ignorant of it. Why? Because he is a smart guy. So project the scripture for me. Something that I didn't talk about. So watch this again. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will be your servant. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servant and serve us. Everything that Goliath said was a lie, but this is true. He cursed David with his God, predicted the outcome of the battle even before the battle started. And all that was a lie from the devil, but this particular verse is a fact is true. If you don't prevail against the enemy and know the operations of the enemy, the modus operandi of the enemy, you will lose every battle that you are involved in. You must know the methods. How the devil operates. Otherwise, if the devil prevail against you and he overpowers you and overcomes you, automatically you have become his servant. That is why there are people under the sound of my voice because they have not been able to prevail against the enemy. The enemy have held a lot of us hostage, captives. Some of us, we have been imprisoned. The purpose of the imprisonment is because he has prevailed against us. He has overcome us. He has uh, overpowered us. And if he has, then we are his captives. He can choose to do whatever he wants to do, including killing. And when it comes to the enemy, his ultimate goal against a believer is to kill that believer when it is vulnerable. That believer is vulnerable. Not when you are working with God in holiness and righteousness because one, he will not have the power to do anything to you. Two, he knows if he kills you, you are going to heaven. His ultimate goal is that when he kills you, you come to him. Your soul comes to him. That is the purpose of the killing. And so, that is why you must know how the devil operates, how he functions, his methods of operations and attack. Because the devil doesn't engage in any battle anyhow. If the devil wants to fight you, he will not fight you just anyhow. The devil carefully plans. He has his method of operation. He carefully plans before he attacks. So today, I want to explain certain things to you. So when we say the devil, what is the meaning? Devil. The word devil. What is the meaning? Because oftentimes, we say the devil, the devil, the devil. But we don't even know what it means or who the devil is so when we say the devil who is the devil and what does it mean for satan to be called the devil so the devil the root word for the devil comes from a greek word by the name diabolos diabolos Diabolos. Everybody say diabolos. Somebody say diabolos. And so that is the Greek word for the devil. Now, diabolos have a two compound word. 
two compound words. The first compound word is die. D-I-A. Die. And the meaning of that in the Greek is penetration. Somebody say penetration. Somebody say penetration. Now, the second compound word is bellow. B-E-L-L-O. B-E-L-L-O. Bellow. What it simply means is this. Throwing a ball or a rock over and over and over again until the wall cracks. Throwing a ball or a rock or a stone to a wall or anything continuously until it cracks. In other words, until the membrane of that thing is worn out. Becomes weak. And so, what is the meaning of devil? The meaning of devil simply means this. Looking at the two compound word, die and bellow. It means hitting it continuously until he can penetrate. Hitting it continuously over and over and over again until there is a crack where he can penetrate. Now, right there, it tells you how the devil operates. How the devil functions. His methods of operation and how the enemy attacks. Which means that the devil never gives up. He keep on coming over and over and over and over and over again until there is a crack. Which means that he bombards you with false accusations. And he keep on bombarding you with false accusation by baptizing people with words, false words, false allegations. And those people begin to falsely accuse you. And these accusations keep on coming. And they keep on coming. And they keep on coming. The reason why they keep on coming and they keep on coming and they keep on coming is because Satan has not yet have any crack in the wall. What is the crack? He kept on bombarding you with false accusation. He kept on bombarding you with people slandering you, character assassinating you, smearing your name in the mud, uh, blackmailing you, saying all kinds of things about you. And the purpose is to make you act out of character. Do something that will infuriate God. Do something that will make God angry. Do something that will break the edge. You don't understand. If Satan is throwing something at you over and over and over again, what it simply means is this. It means that there is a garrison around you. There is an edge around you, there is a wall ar around you that will not allow him to penetrate, to get you. But the only way he can get you is to have a crack in the wall. And to have the crack in the wa wall, it means that he has to keep on hammering the same place, smashing the same place, attacking the same place until it creates a crack. That is why the Bible says that the serpent cannot bite you until the edge is broken. And the way Satan breaks the edge is the continuous hammering. The continuous hammering. So that he can penetrate. And so don't be surprised when you prevail in one battle, another battle shows up. 
Just when you conquered, another battle shows up. Just when you have overcome, another battle shows up. Just when you dealt with the enemy, another enemy shows up. Because the enemy never gives up. The enemy never quits. The enemy never throw in the tower. That is why the Bible says that we should be watchful and vigilant. The reason is because we are dealing with an enemy that never sleeps. Have you ever thought the reason why the Bible says our God neither sleeps? The day he goes to sleep, trouble for all of us. Because the devil never sleeps. And so God is widely awake to watch over us. To protect, to keep, to preserve us. To beat back the hand of the enemy. To intercept the, the manipulative acts and the arrows and the rocks and the things that the enemy keep on throwing at us. That is why he is always awake. And please, don't sit there and let the devil deceive you and tell you, me, I, I don't have any enemy. Oh, I, I don't think about anybody. Oh, I, I, I don't care about anybody. I mind my business. Yes, whilst you are minding your business, somebody is minding yours. You are minding your business, but somebody is minding yours. The person is not minding his business. And you got to also understand that demonic spirit, satanic forces, they are spirits that are looking for human hosts. And for them to have a human host, they must attack. They must penetrate. They must infiltrate. And they must take the body of that human being and carry out their assignment and their agenda. Don't sit down and say, me, I don't have any enemy. I don't trouble anybody. I don't worry anybody. I mind my business. All I do, I go to work, I come back. When I don't go to work, I go to church, I come back home, I am with my family. Listen. Listen to me very carefully. Let the Lord arise. Let his enemies be scattered. If God has enemy, what makes you think, you, you don't have an enemy. The Bible says, let the Lord arise. He didn't say, let the enemies of believers scatter. He said, let the Lord arise and let his God, Jehovah, creator of the heavens and of the earth, Elohim, the possessor of all things. If he has enemy, be rest assured, you have one. That is why it is important to know how the enemy operates, how the enemy functions, his method of operation, attacks, and schemes. So that you see, when, when you attack the enemy, you can attack him effectively. When the enemy comes up against you, you, you will be able to know how to block the enemy, how to intercept the enemy, how to stop the enemy from going any further because this enemy he keep on hammering he keep on pushing he keep on throwing until there is a crack until there is a crack that is his method of operation keep on throwing keep on throwing keep on attacking he attacked Jesus three times. After he finished attacking him three times, thank you. After he finished attacking him three times, look at what the Bible said. And he left him for a season. The Bible never said, and he left him. He left him for a while because he was tired. He was resting to pounce back on him. The enemy never quits. When the enemy wants to destroy your marriage, he will keep on shooting arrows. One arrow after the other. He attacks trust in the relationship, attacks trust in the marriage. 
all of a sudden when he hit that and he's not prevailing he attacks the sexuality of the marriage when that is not happening he attacks the affection and the love that you have towards each other in the marriage he keep on hitting it and hitting it until he gets a crack in the wall for you to stop the enemy from having a crack in the wall and penetrating and infiltrating into your family, into your home, into your camp, into your career, your business, into your ministry, you must face him squarely. That is why the Bible says in Ephesians, we wrestle not. Do you understand the word wrestle? Wrestle simply means direct contact. Wrestle simply means direct contact combat which means face to face face to face eyeball to eyeball shoulder to shoulder you don't turn and run from the enemy that is why i have told you time without number that in efficiencies concerning the armor there is nothing to cover the back because we are not fighting defensively we are fighting offensively when you turn your back you are running away from the battle and since there is nothing that covers your back you will become a casualty and the reason why when you look at the armor of god everything covers the face because we have been mandated we have been anointed we have been selected we have give, we have been given all the weaponry and the arsenal and we have been given the authority and the power to face the enemy directly to resist him to contend with him to stop him in his tracks i like it when david said anybody that point his finger at me he said when the wicked point their finger at me yes. cut it off Cut it off. Cut it off. When the enemy pointed a finger at you, you got to understand that the enemy functions in a way that if you are not smart, if you are not intelligent, if you don't know the operations and the manu uh, manipulative acts of the enemy, the enemy will take you by surprise. By surprise. That is why if you are a believer and say, me, I don't want battles. Me, I don't like fighting. Me, I don't want to engage in spiritual warfare. Now, if you say you don't want to engage in spiritual warfare, you don't want to engage in any battle, then you are saying that I am a living dead because the enemy will kill you. The enemy will kill you. The enemy is after your life. The enemy is after your destiny. The enemy is after the prophecy that you are carrying in your spiritual womb. The enemy is after your family. The enemy is after your comfort. The enemy is after your peace. The enemy is after your progress. The enemy is after your advancement. And let me tell you, the enemy will not back off forever. He will keep on coming. That is why every day you must be battle ready. Battle ready. That is why Goliath said, whoever you choose that engages me in this battle and the person prevails and kills me will become your servant. Which means that in this battle you can die. In this warfare you can die. You can be killed. There is a difference between being killed and dying. They are not the same. Go and check the definition. When you are killed, it means that you died before your time. And in this battle, you can die before your time. And don't forget, this battle is not a physical battle. And so you will not find anybody coming to you to punch you. You will not find anybody coming to you, trying to suffocate you. If they suffocate you, it's in the spirit. Look at how many times you have slept and they are choking you on bed. Did you see anybody? 
but you feel the hand choking you. And guess what you were doing? You were gasping for breath. Gasping for breath. You were suffocating. Look at how many times you have been attacked spiritually and you can feel it literally, but yet you cannot see anybody sitting on you. Look at how many times you have had a dream and you saw yourself in a battle or somebody contending with you or wrestling or fighting with somebody. You thought it was a dream. You got up and you saw the cuts on your body. You saw the marks on your body. But yet, nobody came to you physically fighting you. You saw it spiritually. But because the battle is real, you felt, you felt it physically. Because it is not a fiction. It's real. This battle is real. The devil is real. His agents, they are real. They are some of you. He has hemmed you to the extent that he has been able to have the crack and he has penetrated and your destiny has been turned upside down. They are some of you. You are doing things that God has not called you to do. And if you are doing stuff that is not part of your destiny, it has not been written of you in the volumes of the book. Like Jesus said, I have come to fulfill what has been written of me in the volumes of the book. Then it means that in this life, it doesn't matter what you do, what is called fulfillment, what is called satisfaction, what is called joy, what is called peace, you will not have it. Because if you are not doing what God has called you to do, how do you find fulfillment and satisfaction? How do you accomplish anything? It is not possible. But this is how the enemy operates. The enemy operates in such a way that like a church like this, just when you are getting ready to get your blessing in the church, he will make somebody offend you. And out of offense and anger, you leave the church. Oh, that person offended me. Oh, the leadership offended me. The pastor offended me. That church member offended me. And so you see, you are looking at it not in the spiritual perspective, knowing that you are engaged in spiritual warfare, but you are looking at it from the physical perspective and the physical point of view. And so to you, it's a person, but it is not the devil. But you have forgotten that the person made himself or herself available and the devil used that person as a human host to carry out his agenda. And why? Because the enemy doesn't know everything. He is not omniscient. And so he doesn't know all things. I know some of you all of a sudden say, how, how can the enemy not know all things? The enemy is not God. This attribute is only for God. God is omniscient. He is all knowing. There is nothing that can be hidden from him. That is why David said, when I make my bed in the heavens, he is there. When I go to Hades and I make my bed in Gehenna, he is there. When I make my bed beneath the waters of the earth, he is there. And he said, where can I hid myself from the presence of God? And so, God is everywhere at the same time. He knows everything at the same time. He is omniscience, all-knowing. He is omnipresence, everywhere at the same time. He is omnipotent. He has all power. But the devil has not. The devil is a created being. He is not a God. And as a created being, you are at one place at one time. Just as you are here, you are not at home. 
which means that as you are here, when we go to your house, we will not see you because you can only be at one place at one time. And so the devil is one place at one time, but he works with people. And these people bring information to him. That is why we have monitoring spirits, which is called familiar spirit. And so Satan is not following you, but he has agents and demons and spirit that he has been assigned to follow you. And he sits at one place and they come and they give him an account of the assignment that he has given. And they bring information to him. So Satan is all, not all knowing. But the thing is this. Because he studies, because he watches, he can sense. That is why a church like this is a dangerous church. In a good way. Before I'm quoted out of contest. In a good way. But a church like this. If you are not prayerful, you can be here. And I will tell you the reason why. Because this church is a prophetic church. When I call Sister Gifty and minister to her. The Lord is about to do this. This is what God is going to do in three months, in four months. Guess what? The enemy knows. Because he doesn't know until it is vocalized or verbalized. True prophecy. So, eh. so God will make you great. Eh. And so this great door is about to open for you. Because he doesn't know. He works with network. So when they hear prophecies, that is where the battle becomes fierce. That is why anytime time you receive the word of the Lord and you receive prophecy, the battle compounds. It moves from one dimension to another level. And the purpose is this. We have heard. We will not allow it to happen. That is why this church is not just a prophetic. Because for the prophetic to work, prayer, prayer, prayer must accompany the prophetic. Otherwise, there will be so many prophecies and there will be no manifestations. That is why I don't like people getting excited because they have received prophetic word. I don't like people getting excited because they have received a prophet. God is going to do this. God is going to position. God is going to do that. And so they live here just excited. You got to understand that when you receive a prophetic word, that is when the battle begins. And so before, if they assign two demons, just know that they are assigning 5,000. And don't forget, the demons that were dispossessed from their estate, they are more than humanity. Why? Because if one person can be demonized with 5,000 spirits, you can just imagine. Jesus said, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion. And Legion, in the Greek word, simply means a 5,000 troops. And so one man, was demonized with what? Troops. With people. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And so, when he hears the prophet, he sent people to begin to attack you. Listen, don't be ignorant of the enemy. You must know his operations and methods. Don't deal with the spiritual warfare like you are fighting your fellow brother or you are fighting your fellow sister. Let me tell you, you are fighting the devil. The devil. When you grasp that revelation, listen to me, everything becomes easy. All these things, I'm not talking to that person and I'm not talking to that person and I'm not talking to that person. It doesn't work. 
Look at how many people you are not talking to. Has your life changed? Look at how many people you are at lock ahead with. Has your life been transformed? Because it is not flesh and blood. If the enemy use her, God forbid, and he couldn't get you, he will use another person. If he use another person and he didn't get you, he will use another person. He will continue using people. Why? Because he needs a crack in the wall. And for him to have a crack in the wall, he must use somebody. Listen, when it comes to this, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of heaven is one. When God needs somebody, he only needs somebody who is available. When the devil needs somebody, he needs somebody who is available. When you make yourself available to the devil, he will use you. He will use you. But you got to understand though, that if the devil uses you against somebody, there are consequences and ramification and they are judgment. Because Jesus said this. He said, offenses shall come. Which means that when it comes to offenses, you cannot resist it. You cannot stop it. You cannot even pray and say that offense shouldn't come. Because they will come. But look at the second statement. Woe unto the people through which the offense come. The woe is judgment. Woe unto the people through which the offense come. Which means that be careful not to make yourself available to the enemy for the enemy to use you to offend somebody. Know how the enemy operates and function. His methodology, his ideology, all his logics, you must understand. If you are going to overcome, if you are going to prevail, you must know his method of oppression. You are not being attacked and you are not having one spiritual warfare after the other because you are special. Because that is how the enemy operates. And so he hits your career and you are still standing. And he hits it again. He realized that it's not working. So he thinks. And he hits your health. So all of a sudden, doctors are, 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 are cooking up names. They have names for it in everything. All of a sudden, they will start mentioning some name that is tongue-twisting. That is the name of this disease. That is the name of this ailment. That is the name of this infirmity. Uh, before we can deal with it, uh, it's, it's the first of its kind. You know, before we can deal with it, we have to cut you open and we have to look at that and do this and do that and all that. It is factored into your finances. Because by the time they are checking, make go to this place, check this, check your bones. So they check your bones. Say, check your marrows. They check your marrows. Lap tests. They are doing lap scan. By the time you realize there is nothing in your account, you are owing up to your neck. And the Bible says, oh no man. So right there is a crack. You must understand how the enemy operates. Don't be ignorant of how the enemy operates. If he tries your health and it is not working, what the enemy does is this. And so he creates division. Create division. Suddenly there is a division between you and the person that wants your advancement. All of a sudden you cannot see eye to eye. All of a sudden, the devil starts whispering to you and telling you that, you see, this trouble you are having, you see, 
as you are sitting there. You are suspicious of everybody, including the person sitting beside you. Suspicious of everybody. Isn't it pathetic that we can even come to church when somebody touch our, touch our clothing? Hey, man, takabahantus. Morosa kabahata. Lia kapantua. I sanctify myself. I purge it. I purify. I image myself in the blood. I soak myself in the blood. I bath with the blood of Jesus. The devil is a liar. Whatever they are trying, back to sender. Back to sender. Back to sender. Fire. L look at all this ignorance. Just because somebody that the devil has whispered to your ear that is he is, 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 is your enemy just touching you. They have touched you with witchcraft. <laughs> that dress that you put on that looks so good and you look so pristine and neat from that day you won't wear it again. <laughs> I'm not just telling you stories. I know. I'm a pastor. I know. I have pastored this church for 13 years. I know. I have been in church my life, and it's not an exaggeration. My life, I was born in the church, lived in the church, slept in the church, did everything in the church. At the end of the day, I went to school to be accountant. I became a pastor in the church. <laughs> and so I know what I'm talking. I'm not just telling you stories. Stories. There are some of you under the sound of my voice. When somebody shake your hands, that the devil has whispered to you that this person is the enemy. Listen to me. You can't wait to get home to wash your hands. You wash your hands with all the soap. Hand soap. You can't. You. In fact, if you can peel your palm, you will peel it off. But the battle, that is not how you fight it. When you see people behaving like that, you have to know right away there is a crack in the wall. Already there is a crack. Like usually when I teach on witchcraft manipulation and I tell you that if you don't believe in witchcraft manipulation, right there you have been manipulated. Right there. The fact that you don't believe is a manipulation. <laughs> manipulation. The warfare is not physical. Satan makes us think that it is physical. Satan makes us think that this battle and this warfare is against one another. One another. <laughs> one another. And I've said this, for, but for the sake of my teaching, I want to say it again. I said it from the beginning. Jesus said, a kingdom that is divided against itself shall not stand. And he was saying this in reference to the kingdom of darkness because at the time he had cast out devil. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees were saying to him that he cast out the devil by the spirit of Beelzebub. And Jesus wanted them to understand that the kingdom of darkness is not divided against itself. And so he said, a kingdom that is divided against itself cannot stand. And so in short, Simply put, he was telling the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the kingdom of darkness is not divided against itself. It's not divided against itself. Which means that Satan doesn't allow division in his kingdom, but his number one tool is division. When Satan wants to attack, his number one tool is division. He creates division. He knows he has a crack. Because don't forget, the spirit of God is not the author of confusion. Confusion there is synonymous to division. Which means that wherever the presence of God is, wherever the Holy Spirit is, there will be unity. That is why on the day of Pentecost, they were united. It was only through their unity that the spirit of God descended upon them. 
Where there is no unity and there is division, you have to know the spirit of God is not there. The presence of God is not there. The enemy is at work. The enemy is at work. So, he doesn't allow division in his kingdom, but his number one weapon is division. Because he know with division, he has created a crack. Why? Because the Bible says, if two shall agree. Agree means unity. Coming together. And so, if there is division, how do we agree? And the Bible says, one will change a thousand, two, ten thousand. You see the power of unity. The power of agreement. And so, if he creates division, we cannot have impact. We cannot infiltrate, penetrate into his kingdom and, and destroy his works and his activities like we are supposed to. Because one can only change a thousand. This is how the enemy operates. That is why when you see that all of a sudden you are having headache, migraines, and you don't deal with it, the next one, you won't believe what is coming. By the time you realize the migraine didn't work, it didn't get you, it makes your head begin to swell. So you saw a sore on your breath. By the time you realize, if you don't deal with it and stop it, because he's still hammering, he's still throwing stuff. By the time you realize, they said, oh, that, that sore that is there is cancerous. You have cancer. Small lump. Oh, it's cancer. Because why? He is throwing. He doesn't stop. That is the meaning of devil. Somebody shout devil. devil. That is the meaning. He doesn't stop. He keep on throwing. 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 And throwing. And throwing. You know the reason why Moses didn't make it to the promised land. Because the devil hijacked his congregation, the three million congregation. They turned against him, complaining, speaking things against him. And guess what? Continuously, continuously, continuously until there was a crack. Moses got angry and furious, disobeyed God. That was the end. He was right there at the brink of the promised land. He could only see. He couldn't enter. Satan got him. They were complaining and they were murmuring and speaking against Moses. Moses had had enough. And it was continuous, 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 continuous. One of the conclusions I came to is that my leadership, church members, if somebody speak bad of me, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. When they are saying stuff about me, I know myself. I know my relationship with God. Don't come and be telling me stuff that will mess up my spirit and make me angry and make me become bitter. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Because you see, it doesn't matter how strong and how powerful and how spiritual you are, you are still a human being. And so when you hear people speak ill of you, it hurts you and it does something to you. Which means that if I don't hear, I won't feel the way I feel. So don't tell me. Keep it to yourself. And I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear. Because this is how the enemy 
operates. This is how the enemy functions. If you are in a relationship, all of a sudden, one person is getting angry for no reason. Just know he is throwing. <laughs> he is throwing. He is throwing. Don't be ignorant of his devices. Take a stand in the realms of the spirit. Listen, the power we carry is enormous. Let me tell you, Satan dreads us. He, he dreads, the devil dreads us. He knows what we carry in the inside of us. Do you know when you take a stand, do you know what happened in the kingdom of darkness? When you take a stand, even for five minutes, and you begin to make proclamation, you begin to make decrees, you begin to superimpose divine legislation and executive decision of eternity over the works and the diabolical act of the enemy and over all the things that the enemy is throwing at you, you have no idea what happens in the kingdom of darkness. There are certain times when I'm in prayer, and especially, especially uh, uh, spiritual warfare, and, and, and I'm battling, and other things, often times, I have this experience very often. A hand will just touch my back, and I will literally feel that there is a hand at my back. Suddenly, my eyes will open, and everything that I am praying about, I can see it. Just like I'm seeing you, I can see it happening. And oftentimes, I will see angels numerous, uncountable, released with drawn swords, long swords drawn. And I will see these demons with their weirdness, and I will see them in battle. And I will see the angel chopping them off, decapitating them. And I will see them bleeding. But the bleeding is not the blood that we have. It's like mud. When you put uh, 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 death in water and you miss it, that is how it comes. And decapitating them. Let me tell you, when you stand in the name of Jesus and you begin to act, on the authority that Christ has delegated unto us, you create damages in the kingdom of darkness. That is why Satan will allow you to do anything, but he will prevent you from praying. Have you realized some of his modus operandi, how he operates? You have time to eat. You don't sleep. When you are eating, do you sleep? Your eyes is widely open. You will finish the food. But when you start praying, all of a sudden, you are dozing off. Say, man, I am so tired. Right there, Satan has just whispered to you and you have believed. You weren't tired when you were eating. You had the strength. To finish the food. And your eyes was widely open. You never complain about tiredness. But prayer, you are tired. I am yet to hear somebody said, I am too tired to eat. I am yet to hear or to see somebody say, I am too tired, too tired that I forgot to eat. <laughs> it doesn't matter how tired you are and how forgetful you are at the end of the day. You will remember that you have not eaten and you will eat. How many remember that they have not prayed and they pray? <laughs> You forget. Ah, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. So, you come into prayer. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Oh, Father, Father, I thank you. 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 I thank you. And so, 
for all this time, the prayer is, Father, I thank you. Because you doze off and you have to begin again. You doze off and you have to come back again. What impact and effect can you have? What impact? What impact? What effect can you have over the kingdom of darkness? It has advantage over you. Right there, there is a crack in the wall. He has penetrated. He has taken over. And let me tell you, when you open a little space for the devil, he expands it. He don't just expands it for you to have ownership. When he, has, when he expands it, he takes ownership, dominion, control. He makes it his stronghold. That is my next message next week Friday. Dealing with the stronghold of the enemy. What are strongholds? So, that is how the enemy operates. I charge you tonight. Be angry. Let the holy anger rise up within you and take a stand against the enemy. Let the holy anger rise up within you and say enough is enough. Enough is enough. I'm ready for the devil at any time, including tonight. I was ready to deal with the enemy spiritually and punch the enemy physically. Tonight in this area. Whilst I was standing, I was ready. You have no idea. I'm not stupid. I am not foolish. Nobody can attack me in this church. I will give you a punch. When you fall, you won't get up again. Because this point is missed with the Holy Ghost power. I'm sending a message. You have no idea. I'm not ignorant. Though. I am not ignorant at all. My eyes is widely open like that as I'm standing here. You are agent. You send you here. You think you, 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 are, you are a liar. Wrong address. I will slap you for free. I will slap you spiritually, physically, emotionally, psychologically. Every aspect. Don't even try it. Don't, don't try it. I am alert. Look at somebody say, I'm alert. Don't keep the enemy in a room. Be alert. Be alert. Don't let him create any crack or any space. Don't, don't allow it. Be firm. Be vigilant. Take your stand. Take your stand. Like a military man. Be combatant. Be ferocious. Be wild. Don't let the enemy play games with you. Let him know that you, you are a no-go area. You are a no-go area. And you are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. You are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Just as Goliath said, if you defeat me, I will become a captive to you. But if I defeat you, you will become a captive to me. Let us deal with the enemy. Stop the enemy. Prevail against the enemy and hold the captivity captive. Hold the enemy at ransom and tell the devil you are in my hands and you are not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere. And me, if you make a mistake as an agent and you come into my hands, I won't kill you immediately. I start from breaking your knees. I will, I will break your knees. After I finish breaking your knees, I'm coming to your waist. I will break your waist. I'm telling you. I will break. All these things is a warning I'm sending to the kingdom of darkness. Don't try it. This church, don't try it. If they send you here, say, I'm not going. 
I cannot allow my bones to be broken because I will break you one by one. I will start with your knees. I will start with your waist. I will start with your shoulders. I will start with your hands. I will cripple you. And you will go back and you will know that they are powers. But there is a superior power. They are powers, but there is a superior power. I will break you in pieces. Don't mess with me. Goliath was nine feet. David wasn't even six feet. The power is not in the stature. It's in who you are. And who you believe. And what you have been given. Rise up and take a stand. Don't let the enemy frustrate your marriage. Frustrate your career. Frustrate your life. Frustrate your destiny. Frustrate your education. Frustrate your family. Taking everything from you and you are just watching. Oh God will do it. One day, one day, God will do it. You have been saying this one day, one day. The one day has never come. And the devil also have deceived you. What is written? Is written. God has said it. I believe it. That settles it. God has said it. I believe it. That settled it. How many years have you been saying that? Have you seen any settlement in your life? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Get ready for me next week to be strong when I deal with stronghold. Bringing every imagination to the captivity, to the obedience of Christ. Do you know what that means? To, to bring the captivity captive. You think it's just something easy. You just get up and do it. Hey! You must be fearful and fierce and combatant and battle ready. Jesus said, before you can enter into a strong man's house. You must first bind the strong man. If you think that when you arrive, the gate man, let me use gate man or the bouncer. We say, ah, you are cool. Cool. Cool, man. Cool, man. So you can enter. As you are coming, the strong man is ready. Ready to defend his territory. His jurisdiction, his domain, which means that I am ready to fight you. So, if you are coming and you are not battle ready, you are dead. You are a casualty. Please, be ever ready. Be ever ready. I don't know if, 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 if you know, when I was growing up, there is a, a Barry by the name of Ever Ready. Oh, how many of you, uh, those batteries are no, it's called Ever Ready. Ever Ready Barry. It's still in Dollar General. At least go and get it to remind yourself. <laughs> <laughs> ever Ready. You must be Ever Ready. Let me tell you, this battle is real. It is real. It's no joke. It's no joke. It, this is not a play. Man. It's no joke. The battle is real. It is real. It is real. Hmm. One day, I caught a revelation and I looked through the Bible and I realized that all the priests, majority of them, they are children, wayward. Go and read your Bible. The priests, majority of them, they are children, wayward. That is why when you see most pastors, when you see their children, they are pastors, they are children don't want to have anything with the church. They are rebellious, wayward, wedly. 
I saw it. I said, it can happen to the people in the Bible. Old Testament, New Testament. And it can happen to modern day preachers. But not me. It's not possible. Because I am not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. It will not come to my door. It will stop right at the gates of the devil. It will not come to my door. It will not happen. It will not happen. It means that for that not to happen, I must take a stand. I must take a stand. If you don't take a stand, it will happen. Listen, take a stand. When you take a stand, the things you are worried about, everything will begin to fall in place. It will come to divine alignment. Take a stand. Take a stand. Fight. Fight for your marriage. Fight for your relationship. Fight for your children. Fight for your family. Fight for your ministry. Contend with the enemy. Engage the enemy. And tell the enemy, I will not be a non-entity. I will not be a laughing stock. I will not be a byword and a proverb being quoted by everybody. I will not be a shame and a reproach. That, it will not happen. That will not happen. I know how the enemy operates. I know how the enemy functions. Don't be ignorant. Rise on your feet. Did somebody learn something? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. You learned something? Yes. Are you angry at the enemy? Yes. Listen, tonight your destiny must be released. Amen. I'm way out of time and my time is almost up. But I want us to use five minutes. And I want you to go after the enemy and tell the devil, I know your tricks. I know your method of operation. And I want you to know, you cannot have a crack in this one. You cannot penetrate this one. You cannot prevail. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready to pray? Yes. Are you ready to pray? You know where the enemy has been throwing the arrows. You know where the enemy has been throwing the stones. You know where the enemy has been throwing the rocks. And you know how he keep on throwing and keep on throwing and keep on throwing. Yes. You must stop the enemy in his tracks. Are you ready to pray? Yes. In five minutes, I want you to pray and stop the enemy in his tracks. Clap your hands and begin to pray. Yes. We take authority over every forces of darkness. We take authority over every demonic entity, over every satanic entity. Matikibiria sukabaya, rakabo saka, rakabanti kibiria kabo babaya, rakabuli akabo babaya, rakamanti kibiria kato kabaya, rakabuli asakan bati akabe babaya, rakabuli akabanti kibiria kataya, rakabuli asakan bati akabe, rakopo shikimiria katia, Maria kabo baba ti kabaya, Maria kabanti ya. Katua Kabea, Rakabulia Sakambatia Kabaya, Maria Kabo Papa. Every rock the enemy has thrown at you, we are throwing it back at him. Every arrow that he has shot at us, we are throwing those arrows back at the enemy. Malia Kaboa, Maranka Bati Kabahaya, Rakabulia Sakambatia Kaboa, Rakabulia Kabi Papa, Rakabulia Sakaya, Matua Kabu. Papa, 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 Papa,
Rekabulia sakamba kaya kabo. Rekabulia kabe babanti kibiria kapa. Malia kapa. I declare, let destinies be released. Let lives be released. Let ministries be released. Let marriages be released. Let relationships be released. Let careers be released. I declare in the name of Jesus. Let people come out of every prison, from every pit, from every shackles, from every chain, from every hold of the enemy in the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that we have prevailed on every side. We have overcome on every side. In the name of Jesus, Satan, take your hands off. Take your hands off our health. Take your hands off our destiny. Take your hands off our relationships. Take your hands off our destiny. Take your hands off our careers. Take your hands off our children and family. Take your hands off uh, uh, everything that concerns us. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Mati kapahaya. Mata kapahaya. Rakabosa. Rekamanti kibilia katia. Marua kapi papaha. Rakabulia saka. Mati akabo papaha. Rekamanti kibilia katia. Rekabosa. Malia kapo papa ha, rekabuli akabe papa ha, rekabuli akati akabe ha, rekabuli akabe papa ha, rekamanta akaba ha, rekabuli asoke beri akata ha, rekabuli akabe papa ha, rekamanti akatu akabe ha, rekabili akatu akabe ha, rekabuli akabanti kebiri akati ha, rekabanta akaba ha. We overturn every satanic tables. We overturn every demonic tables. We overturn the works of the enemy, the activities of the enemy, the manipulative acts of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, we release confusion in the account. We disarm them in the name of Jesus. Let them turn against each other. Let them fight against each other. Let them contend with each other. Let their schemes not work. Let their penetration not work. Let their their infiltration not work rise up to our cause rise up to our defense stop them in their tracks stop them in their ways in the name of Jesus let your counsel stand your counsel concerning our lives your counsel concerning our destiny your counsel concerning our future your counsel concerning us let it stand in the name of Jesus Sokaya Maranka Bantiki Biriasa Morosa Kabahanta Lea Kabo Papa Raka Bantiki Biriakate Marua Kapulia Kabe Papa Raka Mantiki Biriakate Raka Polia Kabo Papa Raka Mantaya Kabo Papa Raka Polia Kabo Papa Maranka Pilia Kato Kabe Raka Polia Kabe Papa Raka Bantaya Kabo Papa Raka Polia Akabe papa, rakabanti kibiri akati akabe, rakapuli akabo papa, rakabiti kibiri akati, rakapuli akabata ye, rakapuli akabe papa, rakapuli akabo papa, rakapuli akabanti akata, rakapuli akabanti kibiri akate, rakapuli akabo papa, rakapuli akabe papa, rakabanti kibiri akate, rakapuli akab. Rakabanti kibiri akate, rakapopapa liakate, rakapiliakate, 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 rakapili
thanks, give him thanks. Thank him. Thank you for watching this message. For more information about this message or the ministry, call us at 770 or visit us online at eagleschapel.com.